When this job came across the MBY desk, I was pretty quick to snap it up. As you can see, we're in an absolutely beautiful part of the world. That's Helsinki over there. And that there is the new XO Defender 9. The idea is that we take this boat, we spend three or four days going across the Baltic from Helsinki to Stockholm, stopping at various islands en route and testing out this boat in exactly the element for which it was designed. Now this is going to be the support boat, that's the Explorer 10. On the Explorer series you get a full beam pilot house with fore and aft access. And here we have a narrower pilot house with walk around decks for extra practicality and a forward cabin. We also have impact mitigation seats as standard in there which tells you everything you need to know about the applications for which this boat was designed. And at the back end, in addition to a cockpit that can be better integrated with the internal space inside that uh, pilot house, we've got a pair of Mercury 225s. Now they should be good to take this to about 45 knots, but this is boat number one, so it's not perfect yet. It's uh, running about 200 kilos heavier than Yako would like to see on subsequent production models. But in all regards, you have to say, it's a fine looking boat and an extremely exciting looking trip. So here we are on Erkies Island, we've had welcome drinks and we're just going to go and try to find the sauna. Now the sauna is an important part of Finnish culture. At the end of a long hard day, particularly in the winter when the weather's cold, extremely cold in these parts, the Finnish people love nothing more than jumping in a hot sauna, sitting naked with their mates drinking beer and talking about all the things that in the general run of the day you don't have time or inclination to talk about. It's a, a form of therapy in a way. It gets the traditionally masculine and slightly insular men of Finland opening up and talking in a quite a profound and uh, charming way. I can hear them over this way. So let's turn around here and let's see if we can track them down. If you want to know what the feeling after a sauna is, look at these gents here. Look at that. Look how happy these fellas look. Look, they're delighted with life. And they were miserable beforehand. They were so sad looking. 
And now I'm going to go for a cheeky little swim in the lovely water and afterwards I'll be feeling a million dollars and ready for tomorrow when Yako's going to get me beaten up in big seas and strong winds. So that is my swimming pool for the evening. That's pretty special, isn't it? We're going to be heading pretty much west today to look at the southernmost island in Finland and apparently quite a historic lighthouse. And we're going to be doing that into what they're saying is likely to be 20 knot westerlies in fairly open Baltic seas. So it's going to be quite lively, they think. But this boat, in a lot of ways, looks well set up for that sort of thing. Oh, firstly, <coughs> and there's the hull. So it's made from military grade aluminium. Nobody could quite tell me exactly what that means, but what's not in doubt is the, uh, the solidity of the build. This is 8 mil at the keel. It's uh, 5 mil on the whole bottom and 4 millimeter aluminium on the sides. It's also slightly longer, slightly beamier and slightly more acute. There's a increased dead rise of about 23 degrees I think over the um, Explorer 9. There's also lovely deep set walkways on both sides with elevated guardrails to keep you very secure when you're making your way around the boat. And on the boat itself, of course, we have impact mitigation seats as standard, fully adjustable. And the people in the aft end of the pilot house, they're not forgotten either. Yes, you've got the two or three man bench aft, as you see. But if you don't fancy sitting down and taking the impact through your backside, you're a little bit jealous of those people on those impact mitigation seats up forward. Then in rib style, you can grab these vast stanchions. You can plant your feet, you can bend your legs, and you can take the impact through your legs instead of through your, your bum and your back. And the great thing is, because of the elevated headroom of this uh, new design pilot house, you still get, even in the standing position, excellent all-round views of the horizon. So it's uh, day two, we're currently heading more or less west, we're heading down to that most southerly uh, island in the, in the Finnish archipelago. Uh, we're going to see a lighthouse, which is apparently one of the largest and is uh, historically significant. But I just want to talk about the helm a bit, because we've got some quite traditional sort of Finnish archipelago seas here. Sort of short, choppy stuff with a few white horses fluttering about here and there. And as we're driving along, the ergonomics here are absolutely lovely. I've got my foot brace down below. I've got my bolster in place. I planted one foot on the floor. We've got this excellent little guardrail around the, uh, the throttles, which is great just to dangle a little finger and operate the throttles with your, your index finger. The steering's beautifully weighted and responsive, and we're just cruising along at maybe 26 knots with about 60 litres per hour coming out of those uh, tanks. But of course on this boat, being the Defender 9, we've got 450 litre tanks. So we've got a big range here, you know, up towards 200 nautical miles. And that's even with, you know, a good margin per error left in the tank. It's a very settled boat to drive. I mean, at the moment we're going about 28 knots. We're taking it easy because we're going alongside the Explorer 10, which is using an inboard 270 instead of the inboard 370 so that tops out at about 32 knots so we've been taking it easy but if we put the hammers down a little and we've got plenty of clear water around here to do so you'll see the pickup is pretty instant and we move well up towards 40 knots not a problem at all but it's not really quite so much about the speed because as I say this is boat number one and it's two or three hundred kilos too heavy at the moment it's more about the handling that you have here so we trim in a touch start to have a little play check where our support boat is there's some tremendous grip in that turn it's a nice secure reassuring bit of heel as you angle over and because you've got these vast 
fast one piece side windows, visibility is outstanding and it's absolutely the same whether you're sitting down or standing up, right up like this. Because we've got the new elevated pilot house on this Defender model, extra headroom, windows all round. I can still see the bow of the boat, I can see the horizon and I can see a good bit of sky above that. And that's not just ahead, that's to both sides and way aft. Now I've always harped on about how the ergonomics of properly sorted finished sports boats is a joy to see. Well this is a prototype so it could be forgiven for falling a little bit short in that regard but to be honest it absolutely nails it. Well, we just come across the uh, open Baltic from Finland to Sweden and I'm impressed by how the, uh, the boat behaved. I mean, if you look at the hull, you see that vertical stem, those acute angles forward. It's easy to imagine that it wouldn't be much of a following sea boat, but there's actually impressive buoyancy in that bow and you do have to elevate it a touch with a, a spot of trim as the rollers come through just to stop it steering by the bow and throwing you of course. On the test boat we've got a pair of Mercury 225s. Now you can also spec it with twin 200s or if you prefer a single rig you can go with uh, Yamaha's 425 horsepower XTO or Mercury's 450R. Well with the 450R you can expect untold speeds in the region of 51.5 knots and with these engines here the 225s you can expect around about 48.5 knots now the best we've achieved is 46 knots but actually that's pretty good i have to say because as uh, the prototype uh, number one model it's two or three hundred kilos heavier than the production models and also because we've been going long distance we've been uh, carrying pretty much full tank and the tank on this boat is 450 litres. So that's about 320 kilos of extra weight. That's the equivalent of perhaps four people. So I think 46 knots is pretty good. You know, it's interesting when you come to a place like Uta, so remote and so wild, to think that a lot of Finnish boats, certainly exo boats, are built to cope with seas like this. They're built to keep you comfortable and that's outstanding stuff. But the boys that I'm traveling here with, they also tell me that it's enshrined basically into Finnish law that nature should be available to all and available to Finnish people to use. So all these islands throughout Finland, you can pretty much park on anyone you like. Of course, there are restrictions on particularly privately owned islands, but the vast majority are uninhabited and government owned. And those islands generally have barbecue facilities and they have toilets and they have saunas that you're free to use. It means that you can cruise around these parts without spending a fortune on hotel rooms and so on you can cruise around with a small boat that doesn't have a head compartment and you're not restricted in where you can go and what you can do and that's not just great for Finnish boaters it's great for cruise boaters who choose to tour here as well now the new Defender 9 is designed to take you places other boats won't necessarily go and to enable you to sleep there in relative comfort so I've slept in this one overnight this is model number two so a few developments and tweaks on model number one but the basic parameters of everything are the same of course and i have to say it's a pretty comfortable night it really was if you take a look at the bed space itself it's pretty long from that front edge there to the back edge at the port heads. It's about six foot three, six foot four. So there's plenty of space to stretch out. And though I appreciate a lot of people like to sleep with their heads aft and their feet at the narrow end. For me, I think there's a slight incline. So it's, it's more comfortable if you sleep with your 
head at the top end particularly because well firstly I'm sleeping alone here tonight so there's no clash of elbows but also we've got these fabric uh, inserts just attached on the diagonal which is very comfortable against your shoulders the lighting is here good as well the the kind of uh, uh, recessed LED strips all the way around the back looks very cool picks out the contours on the hull sides and then further after the back end have some extra storage here in some little cupboards we have shelves here too and actually at the very front we have a nice deep recess i also like the way the various doors open with a little click of a button up it comes and then slide away the lower section and you've got easy access out into the pilot house and at the front end things are even more fun it has to be said again it's a press button thing Oh, the rams are not quite as strong on this one out it comes and then if we come down and flip up this bit of cushion and pull that good and hard out comes this step a really neat neat bit of design because you can step there straight out onto the foredeck without smacking your head which is great and that uh also makes it great for chucking your baggage down if you don't intend to use this as a sleeping spot but also it means that even when you've got this uh, hatch shut over there's plenty of space here for a couple of people to sit one on either side and to use this as a simple table it's extremely impressive there are a couple of uh, windows one on either side as you can see but the designer took the decision, I'll pop out so you can see how this looks, took the decision to fit these panels on the outside, which obviously limits your view and your light. But you've got plenty of natural light from the glass inserts in the overhead hatch and the forward insert here. And you have to say, aesthetically, they look quite cool. They're made to look like the uh, engine vents of a high-performance sports boat, and they kind of do. Now we're heading south through Sweden on a very narrow channel as you can see and what's particularly lovely about this and I speak as a man who has uh, owned a boat on the canals in England is that this boat despite being a relatively modest size and a planing boat at that tracks absolutely beautifully off the plane you look at that bow, absolutely steady, and that's me without touching the wheel in the slightest. That extra waterline length from that uh, vertical bow really makes a good difference. Plus, of course, the, uh, the extra depth in the V on this particular Defender 9 model. And of course, it's not designed just to poodle along on inland canals like this, but it is very effective at the job. The back end of this boat is a really critical part of the design. You can see we've got this central aft bench which frees up uh, spaces on both sides to access the integrated swim platforms, they're little gates uh, to cordon those off. And if we fold this backrest forward, now obviously that enables you to trim these engines right out, get the props out. But also we've got this little, this little bridge between the two platforms so you can make your way from side to side. At, at the moment, in fact, this is, as you can see, it flexes a little, but production models, we use uh, much stronger uh, GRP molding to ensure that it's nice and rigid. 
Well, we've got this folded down actually. It's interesting to note that because this is kind of billed as a boat that can take you further, take you out when other boats stay in port, <coughs> it's got these little straps that enable you to strap down, strap down the backrest and prevent it from flapping about or becoming damaged in heavy seas. Now I've asked Yako the designer to sort this for me because it's difficult to do with just one hand on a camera. So with it all reversed you've got dining there very quickly for four people at a stretch perhaps six but you still have access all the way up those side decks to the bow and back on both sides and when these windows <coughs> are open to open up the pilot house they also provide a bit of shelter aft if there's a bit of a beam wind to keep you nice and cozy when you're having your lunch it's a very effective way to make good use of the cockpit on a pilot house boat if you feel so inclined when lunch is finished you could drop that table into that space pop the infills in and this is a really good sized aft sunbed for two three or four people just to lounge and enjoy themselves and you can also supplement that of course with a sunbed up here in this big bow space which involves <coughs> this entire deck covered with tailor-made cushions right back to this edge at the, the uh, leading edge of the console and you also get backrests fitted right around here in a C shape so you can easily fit four to six people in there plus another couple sitting on the console here and they're options that are very well worth having so as we approach Stockholm now we've just stopped at this beautiful restaurant for a wonderful meal sadly I'll be going home tomorrow after three fantastic days it's been very different it's a unique kind of boating environment it's not necessarily something that uh, a British boater would expect it's a real surprise in a great many ways the boats looked after me an absolute treat the people on those boats have also looked after me like I'm a lifelong friend and it's a really touching experience to be honest with you I feel like I've had a, a, a fantastic time. I, I, I've already known, to be honest, that uh, I, I kind of loved this part of the world. But uh, this last three or four days has really brought it home how much I enjoy it. You know, it's not the, a natural choice for a cruising destination because it doesn't have the, the reputation or the climate necessarily of a place like uh, the Mediterranean. But if you want something really different, where you can feel immersed in a boating culture that's entirely inclusive and completely accessible, then you really must give Finland a go.